But let's get into the South African uh, PMI now because in the studio with me is Ab Abdul Davids from Cahiso Asset Management. We've got a reading of just over 50 for our local PMI, which is good because it's expanding. It's better than China, it's better than Germany, it's better than Italy, Spain, and a few other countries as well. But is it good enough? Abdul, thanks very much for joining us uh, this lunchtime. So tell us about the number. We had the, we've had a bit of volatility in the PMI recently. We, we had that really big sharp dip below 50. We bounced back to 51 and a bit um, uh, last month, back down to 50.2. What were the main features? One of the, thank you very much. One of the main features was that the new sales orders obviously declined uh, by about five index points. We have seen the employment index on the other hand going above 51. Uh, and that's obviously been quite a volatile number. It's been about 50 about two months ago until it declined below 50 again. What we have seen is that business activity levels have also started to decline. It's a marginal decline, but it's still a decline nonetheless. What we've also seen is that there's been a consistent decline in expected business conditions. Uh, and that's telling us that uh, purchasing managers are very unsure and obviously very insecure in terms of the future as well. We have seen the events uh, in August unfolding in terms of the mining sector, and I think that weighs on sentiment uh, in the industry as well. Is it really is that important? I mean, is sentiment, when the sort of events that have unfolded tragically, both from a social point of view and an economic point of view in South Africa, when those, uh, those events unfold, does it adversely affect the PMI simply because the PMI is run by human beings who have to place these orders? That's right. Mm. And if one looks at the way that it's, it's really a survey that is conducted and um, there's an element of uh, expectations built into the, the, the nature of the, the PMI as well. Whilst, for example, the, the new sales orders is looking at actual activity in the, in the month um, of that particular month, some of the other indicators are obviously sentiment driven. And uh, we have seen, for example, anecdotally, uh, when there has been disruptions in terms of labor, uh, macro issues affecting South Africa, we have seen sentiment turn negative towards the, the manufacturing sector as well. And that weighs on purchasing managers' minds as well, unfortunately. Yeah, it does. I'm just looking at the, li the list here of uh, the, the sub-indexes. If you look at new sales orders, mm -hmm. in February it was 64.8. Yeah. And here we are at the level, that, what is it now? It's a 46.9. 46. That's right. That's an extraordinary move. I mean, yes. if you take the difference yeah. between the February figure and the August figure, Figure, mm -hmm. divide it by the, the, the base figure of February, it's a massive percentage move. That's right. And what we have seen is that we have almost seen this rebound in the first quarter of this year. It started to taper off. Bearing in mind, fourth quarter last year was fairly weak. So we have seen a rebound in terms of the those uh, indices in terms of the new sales orders, actual activity levels, etc. So in the context of a global PMI, we saw Africa's bucked the trend in the first uh, quarter of this year, that we can we ascribe to rebound effects coming through. Now we, we believe that uh, the current PMI is really just uh, performing in line with global PMIs. Our in demand, our in customers being Europe predominantly and uh, some of the Asian markets, what is affecting them is really now affecting our manufacturing sector. On top of that, we've got disruptions in terms of labor, we've got uh, negative sentiment towards South Africa, and that's also weighing on in demand as well, unfortunately. And we've also got the things things like the, the Chinese PMI, which we've been speaking about on Power Lunch before you arrived, uh, Abdul, yeah. which is now officially, according to the Chinese authority, mm -hmm. uh, below 50. But it's been below 50 for 10 months, according to yes, the private yes, survey yeah, by the right. Hong Kong and Shanghai, Shanghai Banking Corporation. That's so, right. I mean, that has a knock-on effect. And the European yeah. one has a knock-on effect on China. So we're all interlinked. And when people say, when I read these, um, the, these uh, yeah. sort of slightly optimistic headlines, which is great, uh, on, on my screen it says PMI stabilising. That looks mm. good, but yeah. it's stabilising below 50. Germany yeah. at 44.7, that's very yeah. disturbing. That is very disturbing, and bearing in mind anything below 50 is still contractory in terms of uh, the actual uh, output. What we have also seen, unfortunately, while our number has stabilized, uh, while it has come down, the averages is quite revealing. First quarter this year, our average was close to 56, just uh, over 55.8 or so. Uh, second quarter, we're averaging about 52. So now we're averaging closer to 50. Uh, and the trend is obviously downwards. And this current reading is below the average for the sort of first two months of the third quarter. So if one looks at the, the combination of leading indicator, the actual average is uh, declining. I would hazard to say that um, the, the, the next month reading will probably be slightly below 50. And we're heading into the fourth quarter. Uh, it will be very difficult for our PMI to maintain a level above 50, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, let's get on to some more optimistic measures within this uh, index. Employment's gone from 47 to 51. Yeah. At last, some, some hope for the, uh, the, the legions of unemployed in South yes. Africa. 
We, we would like to think so. Unfortunately, if one looks, if one drills a bit into the number, um, bearing in mind that the, uh, the actual PMI is a survey conducted by just over 100 respondents, only 14 of those respondents have said that uh, employment levels have increased. So it's not a widespread sort of recovery in employment in the, in, uh, in the industry. And unfortunately, we've seen this before, about two months ago, the, the employment index also went above 50. Uh, so if one can, uh, Hopefully we can get a, a repeat performance uh, in the uh, September PMI for employment. Uh, but uh, we need to, to be more widespread um, beyond just 14 respondents saying there's an increase in activity levels. Yes, we do. What about the prices paid? Because we've had some really, really good inflation numbers, or really yeah. bad inflation numbers, if you want to look right. at it that way. PPI falling to 5.4, I yeah. think, from 6.6 .6 the previous month, and CPI well within the target range of the yeah. South African Reserve, Reserve yeah. Bank. And yet the prices index has gone from gone up to 70.9. I mean, this yes. must be a lagging indicator, surely. Um, there's an element of that to it, but also remembering that uh, the manufacturing sector has a different cost makeup in terms of its cost basket. So traditionally, we know that 35 to 40 percent of our manufacturer's costs are made up by oil and oil derivatives. So we know that oil prices are going up by 93 cents, or petrol prices 93 cents on Wednesday. We have seen elevated oil prices in terms of crude oil prices, and that unfortunately has a much bigger impact in terms of manufacturing than other uh, costs, uh, for example, like wheat, for example. Mm. And that is really what is driving the cost basket uh, for manufacturers, unfortunately, as well. I'd like to think if I was a purchasing manager and having yeah. seen the interest rate cut that we've just seen, yeah. taking South African interest rates down to a multi-decade low, that yeah. I would start to get a bit optimistic. On the one hand, mm. I'm a little bit pessimistic, a little bit gloomy, yeah. and a little bit sad about industrial action. Yeah. And also the, the, mm. the prospect of political turmoil between now and the end of the year. But I must say that mm. cheap money would probably make me come out of my shell a bit. Are you seeing that? Has that not had a chance to be taken into account in these numbers. Yes, I think that is a very powerful driver potentially because anecdotally again if one looks at uh, typical manufacturers balance sheets they are sitting on cash and I think if one looks at operating margins at about 14 percent on average uh, for the sector they are making a decent living uh, from an operating po performance point of view as well. So as you said the alternative cash in the bank uh, is fairly unattractive at these uh, sort of rates so presumably and hopefully we, still, we, we see some capital investment in the sector that will be massive stimulatory for in terms of economic growth and obviously hopefully for job creation as well. Okay, just to summarise then, what do you think between now and the end of the year, the next PMI reading or the next few PMI readings before the end of 2012, you don't think is going to shoot the lights out? In fact, yeah. you might even uh, mm. see it dipping below 50. Yeah, I would anticipate a, a slight reading below 50 for the September number and hopefully a stabilisation in fourth quarter around the 50 level, uh, the fourth quarter around the 50 level as well.